Hi everyone. Um, welcome to Drunk Junk Drawer Art with Miss Riley. I am Miss Riley. Um, it is Thursday, so today I am doing a Thread It Thursday, Thread It Up Thursday. And I have a project for you that is a lot of fun, but requires a lot of patience. Um, today we are going to be doing what I call a cup weaving. Um, this is a project that I do with my third graders um, and we use a bigger cup. So I'm going to show you some different sizes and some different ways that you can modify this to make it a little bit easier. Now when I say weaving, um, weaving is um, part of what we call fiber art. So it is an art that uses fiber, that uses um, thread or string um, or cloth in some way. Um, Weaving is one of the oldest forms of art that we actually have as humans. Um, a lot of art historians believe that humans may have started weaving as um, early as 27,000 years ago. Obviously, they don't have any fabric that is that old, but they found imprints um, that have been fossilized that suggest a texture of weaving that humans were weaving cloth back then. Um, when I say weaving, weaving is just combining two different threads um, to make a solid piece of cloth. So there's a lot of different ways you can do thread. People talk about knitting, which is like a cousin of weaving. Um, you have sewing, which is putting two pieces of fabric together. But we um, weaving is actually taking those two separate threads and interlocking them to create a new piece of fabric. Um, so when I'm weaving, a lot of times people will weave on a loom. A loom is something that holds your weaving and um, looms make it much easier to weave. It's almost impossible to weave without a loom. And so today our loom is actually going to be a cup. Um, there are two, two uh, main words when you're weaving, some vocabulary you need to know. Um, the first one you can see from my diagram I have up here is warp and wet. So warp are your threads that are running up and down usually, and they are the first layer that you put down. Your weft is what goes in between. So we're actually going to kind of take our cups and we're going to turn them into a loom. We're going to cut those warp lines and our yarn or string is going to be the weft. So what I have today are plastic cup. It can be any kind of plastic cup. I'm going to actually show you my finished pro almost finished product here. So this is actually one that I just made um, with just a little bathroom plastic cup, like a Dixie cup. So this took me less than 10 minutes. Um, this would be a good starting project for a smaller kid. It wouldn't frustrate them. It wouldn't take too long. The bigger the cup, the longer it's going to take and the more patience it will take. So I'm actually going to start here with a plastic cup. So this is like a um, probably like an eight ounce cup maybe. I've done them with large solo cups before and those take about five hours to fill up with if you're using regular yarn. I also have my yarn here. This is just yarn that you can buy at Walmart. Um, it, the quality of it really doesn't matter because you're not wearing this. Um, so you can just kind of think about colors. I tell my kids to think about what colors would contrast and look nice together. Uh, if you don't have yarn, you can use shoelaces. Um, if your parents are okay with you cutting like a like an old sheet or some an old shirt, you can cut it into strips and weave with those strips. Anything that's kind of thin that um, is going to be able to give you that over under ability. This is not something you can really do with paper just because it's round and the paper tends to tear. So what I'm going to do is lower my screen and I'm going to start showing you guys how I get my cup for weaving. So my little my little blanket set up here. I don't like to weave at a table. It's not comfortable for me. I like to weave in my lap. And if you um, look at the history of weaving, weaving has always been done in circles with people talking. It keeps your hands busy and people would use this as like a social occasion. So women or men would sit around in a circle. People would have their weaving in their laps. Their hands would be busy um, and they could talk and, and share ideas and tell stories. So weaving's always been a social thing for a lot of humans. So I'm going to take a pair of pretty sharp scissors. You might need a grown-up to help you with this. And I'm going to cut some strips in this cup. Now you're very important. Your number of strips has to be odd. I recommend five. The more strips you cut, the more in and out you're going to have to do. So if you end up with seven, nine, eleven, it's going to be a lot more work. So starting out, I usually cut five strips. I just take my scissors and I don't cut 
white to the bottom. I leave a little bit of a lip down there just so the cup doesn't completely fall, all the pieces fall apart when I'm done. So I cut one strip there. They do not have to be perfectly equal to kind of three. Four and five. So what I've done here is cut lines into this plastic cup that are, are my warp lines. They're going to be the lines that hold my fab or my, my string in. So the next thing I need to do is choose a string. I am just going to pull off a little bit of this yarn. I'm not going to pull off much because I want to show you how to change colors. If I was using this to actually weave the entire cup, I would choose quite a bit. If you cut little strips, you're going to have to keep tying more on to keep tying more, and it's going to waste your time. So what I'm going to do is actually take this string, this yarn, and put it down in the bottom of the cup and using any type of tape. It does not matter. Masking tape probably works better. I'm just using clear scotch tape. I'm just going to tape this piece here down in the bottom just so it doesn't get loose. My next step is to start weaving. So I'm going to pull it straight out through one of these little lines that I cut and I'm going to start a pattern of going over, under, over, under. So I'm going to go over this strip, under the next one, over this, under the next one, over, under, around and around. And when you get back to where you started, because you cut an odd number of lines, your next um, round will be the opposite of the one you did. So where I went over this one, I'm going under it now. Last time I went around, I went under this piece. You can see it down in there. And I'm going over it now. This is the beauty of weaving. It creates this pattern that, that emphasizes strength because you're doing opposites. Now as I weave, I'm continually pushing this down because I want it to be nice and tight. I want to have as few gaps as I can. And actually if you did five cuts like I suggested, you'll actually start to see this really cool star pattern kind of develop here. There you go in the middle of the cup where you can see it crisscrossing. That's okay. So you're thinking like, what, what can you do with these cups? Well, they're really cool for pencil holders. Um, they can hold trinkets. They can hold little, I wouldn't use them for food or water, obviously, because that's going to get nasty. But any kind of little storage that you have, um, marbles, little things they can hold. So once I start to run out and get to the end of this, I have a choice to make. You can keep going with the same color, or if you have more than one kind of yarn, you can choose another color. And all I'm going to do is just pull out my next little bit, cut it off, come here, and you're just knotting them together. So I'm just tying like a little knot in it, make sure it's nice and tight, and I'm just going to keep up with my weaving. Over, under, pushing it down, over, under, over, under, and if I have that little string that I just cut, if it's sticking out, I'm going to do is just take that little guy and tuck him inside. So I just keep going around and around. You can do as many colors as you want to. Um, really, the limit is your patience and your time. You can see this, this would take me a while to fill up, but it's something fun you can do to keep your hands busy if you're watching a movie, if you're watching a TV show. So when you get to the top, that's why I say this little cup over here I've been working on. Um, how can you finish this off? There are a couple of options. One thing you can do is snip it short and hot glue it to the inside of the lid, but sometimes that melts the plastic. So actually what I like to do is just come in to the top string here, pull it up, pull that under the string, and just make a little knot. So I just tie it back to one of the top strings that I have around the lip of the cup. Now, something fun that I did with my third graders this year. So it's finished. 
my pr pretty cool little knit cup. I could put some pencils in this or um, spoons. I mean, really anything that, you know, I, I collect or have. Um, you can add a braid. Some, some of my white plastic is showing. Some people like that. I think it looks good on this one. I would leave it. Some people go, ooh, like maybe if you had like a bright orange cup, it wouldn't look so good. So you can actually hide that by creating a braid. So what I did here was I just cut three pieces of string that are about equal that have these colors, or you can use a con contrasting color, a different color. If I had like some um, black yarn, that could look cool. And I'm actually going to tie all three of them together in a knot at one end. And I'm actually going to tape them here to my computer at the bottom. There we go. And you can tape it on the edge of a table to hold it. And I'm just going to start this process with these of braiding them. So I'm going to go over, under, over. So I'm just pulling these pieces, the outside pieces, over the middle piece, kind of like you would braid hair. And keep going over under the further you get to the outside the easier it gets or the end it's not so long I am not a good braider so I'm probably making a few mistakes as I talk there is a reason Miss Riley has short hair this is not my area of expertise <laughs> but I've got my braid over, over, and you keep going over the middle. And once I have a piece that I think is long enough to go around the edge of my cup, I'm going to take it and make another knot at that end. And I'm going to cut these extra little tails off. And now I have a cool little braided piece that I can either hot glue or tie around the base of my cup, maybe even tape it to kind of hide that, those edges. If you don't like the way they look, you can also do it at the top to create kind of like a decorative lip around the top. Um, so get creative today. See if you can find any kind of cheap flimsy plastic cup um, give it a few snips, and if you have some thread around your house, see if you can create something kind of beautiful. It's like an easy loom that you just have sitting around. Um, plastic cups work, and now that I'm thinking about it, you could also probably try it with paper cups I have used and styrofoam, but you have to be careful not to bend and break the styrofoam. So I really hope... Let me um, so I really hope you guys enjoy this today, and um, we'll spend a little bit of time keeping your hands busy so maybe your mind can wander and think and enjoy something a little bit. Um, tomorrow we will be back for Fun Friday. Um, John and I are going to be doing some fun glue circles. Um, so please, please, as always, send me pictures of what you're working on or videos. You can reach me on Class Dojo if you are an Oakhurst student, on Facebook if you are one of my friends, or on Twitter or Instagram at CSRileyTeach. And I hope you guys have a great Thursday, and I will see you tomorrow.